hipsters bug me. Hipsters really bug me. Well, twihards bug me. Rude people bug me. Impatient people bug me. God, those people that are at the stoplights, you know, where you have the button to press to signal the light to change. And then they just sit there and, and keep pressing it. And you can hear it. You're standing like a good three feet away from them. And you hear them just going, tick, 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 tick. Yeah, this person's in a rush. So you got to go ahead and, and, and change the light fast. Inconvenience everyone else just because this person keeps picking the light, picking the light, picking the light. I just want to walk up and smack their hand and just say, stop it. It's not going to change any faster. People with, with just chaotic kids, though, those people bug me. But I think hipsters bug me the most. Hipsters really do bug me the most. Uh, just simply because, you know, they're the guys that, you know, you'll talk about stuff and they'll always try to throw that up obscure name or that obscure title or that obscure musician or movie just so they can feel superior to you. And that's all hipsters are. I mean, if you literally talk to some hipsters, you sit there and go, oh my God, they read this out of a book. They read this out of a book or they, they saw some <laughs> obscure documentary. You know, you see those hipsters walking around and they've got the the, the Batman tee or the, 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 the superhero t-shirt and you sit there and you think, you know, I went through years of hell just so you fucking hipsters can go ahead and wear those little shirts and think you're cool. You're not cool. You're the society equivalent of bandwagon. Those fans that watch the Super Bowl and when the team wins, they go out and buy their jersey, they buy their hats, they buy all that because it's cool for the next year until the next year when the new team wins the Super Bowl, then they buy their stuff and suddenly their fans. That's what hipsters are equivalent of. I grew up watching sci-fi. I mean, I grew up watching Star Wars, Planet of the Apes, the Planet of the Apes TV series. I played with action figures. I collected comics. I played video games. As you get older, you know, you, you can't tell everyone that you collect these things because then you start, oh, you're a nerd, <laughs> you know. I tried to kind of curb that and try to be like, okay, I'll stop collecting comic books because, you know, I want chicks to go out with me, you know, or I won't tell them I play video games. I'll play video games in the spare room. And but now you got chicks to play video games, you know, like shows like The Big Bang Theory and, and Comic Book Men and sci-fi shows that pay homage to those things it, it's it's so out there now this is gonna so suck but it's almost like being gay you know it's like you know gay people you know in the 70s and even the 80s they had to kind of keep keep everything inside you know they, and, and even in the 90s and then slowly the 90s started to see this for lack of a better word explosion of people coming out being gay some we already kind of knew ricky martin were you the last one to realize that everybody that you were gay? Because pretty much all of us did. All of us did. Suddenly, you know, gamers started to come out, and with the massive leap of PC gaming and, and the PS3 and the Xbox 360, and, and it just kind of exploded. And suddenly, everybody was playing video games. You know, all these people are going to Comic Con, and you know, and, and the movie studios are making comic book movies, and you know, it, it should be like a a geek utopia. But at the same time, I understand those geeks that get upset because, oh, just because you play video games, you're not a geek. Oh, just because you read comic books, you're not a true geek. And I understand that because they're, those are the guys that had to live under the ridicule, the hazing, the, the, the teasing, lonely nights at home on a Friday, Saturday night who wanted to do things that other people did, who wanted to go to those cool parties, you know, basically what it was in like 16 Candles or the Breakfast uh, Breakfast Club or anything like that. Uh, you know, those geeks hate so much that so many people go to Comic-Con so they can't get the ticket to go, you know, can't experience what is basically Mecca for the geek community. It's just so randomly weird that, that suddenly this culture has enveloped them and we have all these conventions now and you know, everybody's, a, you know, a lot of people are Doctor Who fans. and But I came into Doctor Who in 2005 when they first started airing the new series. You know, once it came out in 2005, I was like, oh, I should check that out and see what it is. I became a huge fan. And then I started going back into older episodes, watching that, getting the continuity and just, you know, being a Whovian. It's cool in some aspects because you see the little, I went to uh, Gallifrey 1 
this past uh, February. And it was so cool to me to see kids, probably about 10, 11 years old, dressed up as Matt Smith with the fez and the bow tie, walking around and having a good time. And I'm thinking, Jesus, if I only had that when I was a kid. But now you can, you can find out all these things because the internet, society has changed because of the internet. And, and geek culture has changed because of the internet. Because the internet is essentially a giant fan forum that people can create sites to to whatever they like, to, to Star Trek, to, to uh, Doctor Who, to anything geek-related, gaming, you know, podcasting. And we have G4. Well, some people have G4. Others, you know, pirate it. In some ways, it's become acceptable by the masses to have some kind of geek love. We, true geeks, should feel good that our perseverance, all the stuff we went through, has now manifested itself out there. Yeah, there's a perversion of it, but it's the same thing with like Star Wars. Comic books are falling into that, into that corporate mentality. You're gonna end up reaping what you sow. Once companies find out, oh my God, there's a market for all this, we must grab all the money we can from it. While I understand geek cult, the, the geek rage, that goes on with this whole geek chic kind of thing. I think we should feel kind of good, you know, that that our that our perseverance through those years. And I'm not talking about you little twenty somethings. That definitely not talking to you hipsters. Uh, I'm talking to you people that are in your thirties and, and older that now have. Yeah, I'm a geek. I, I think it's a, it's a good time for us, and I think it's a good time for our kids because it's okay for our kids to be geeky to to like those things, to, to geek out over something that's just cool. We can go ahead and, and be happy with what we have now. Pass our geekness off to our children. Influence them and, and, and tell them why it's cool. Geek out, my friends. Geek out. Because it's okay now. It's really okay now.